Good evening to all of you, dear brothers and sisters. I want to start with the three Beatitudes of Jesus. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons and daughters of God. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. I want to start with a note of gratitude for this golden opportunity given to me to stand before you and to share some of my reflections on this great attempt of bringing leaders of various religions. We have begun and I think this journey will continue. What we want is a world in which there is peace, harmony, fellowship, joy and the presence of God. God created each one of us in his own image. And so every human person is sacred, is divine. And if this consciousness, realization is between us, that every human person is an image of God, I think the world will be a better place to live in. Religion is for spiritual guidance and growth of people. It is a major source of promoting peace, harmony, liberty and justice. We must use religions to maintain and enrich our cultural and religious plurality, which is our asset. Our response must be based on reverence, respect, tolerance and compassion. We need to build today and to promote a spirituality that is acceptable to all of us. Spirituality is an essential part of an individual's holistic health and well-being. It plays a major role in every human and societal governance and development. After 9 by 11 terrorist attack, God bless America came easily to the lips of every American. In fact, spirituality came alive. It established the fact that human beings cannot do without spirituality. One can simply state that spirituality is one's inner quality that makes one transcend the barriers of worldliness, the barrier of caste, creed, sensuality and realize one's connection with the truth. It focuses on personal experiences. Many spiritual traditions accordingly share a common spiritual theme, the path of perceiving and internalizing one's true nature and relationship to God. God, the universe, and He is life. And so each one of us, as it is said, divine. We share in the divinity of God. To be fully human and to be fully alive is to be divine. God is spirit. That's how Jesus explains it in the scriptures. He tells a woman, the hour is coming when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For God seeks such as these to worship Him. God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. I take it from the Gospel of St. John. God is love. God is light. God is beyond form beyond time, beyond sex, beyond color, beyond religion. 
So the word spirit has to do with the wind, with the air that we breathe in. And therefore, it is to do with life. The spirit is life. And so spirituality unfolds life that calls for transcendence, experience, awareness, and appreciation of life beyond itself. It helps all of us to experience God as truth, to experience God as love, to experience God as spirit, and to experience God as peace. Spirituality always points to something that is human. It is the experience of being unique, being fully human, being someone, to experience that power, that energy, that presence, that drive, which shapes one's actions. That's why Saint Augustine used to call this restlessness. That it is path to God to become gradually God-like. And that's what Jesus says. Everyone is a son and daughter of God. So we are in the journey of becoming one with God. The famous US President Abraham Lincoln <clears throat> was a very spiritual leader besides being the President of the United States. During a terrible American Civil War, when his Secretary of the State Stanton said to him, Mr. President, I hope the God is on our side. Lincoln gently replied, my dear chap, it is more important to know that we are on God's side. An important dimension of spirituality is an awakened consciousness. And St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits who run St. Xavier's schools and colleges all over the world, was a spiritual leader. And so he has written a book called Spiritual Exercises, a famous book for retreat to awaken one's spiritual depth, to become fully human and fully alive, to continue the journey in search of God. And so these exercises are given to individuals and groups for eight days to one month. Anyone can make it but it is a spiritual journey. I want to narrate an event that happened 500 years ago. St. Ignatius of Loyola, who was a commander-in-chief in Spain to one of the kings, went to war and he was wounded. And so he was in the hospital. During the time of convalescence, he read a book on the life of Jesus. He was converted. He said, so far I was a commander-in-chief of the army of an earthly king, but now I want to be a commander-in-chief and a fighter of a heavenly king. And so his conversion takes him to become the founder of the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits, who today, of course, work all over the world. And this Ignatius, before he founded the Society of Jesus, he thought that education is important, knowledge is important. And so he goes to the famous university, the University of Paris, to do his MA. And so when he was in the classroom, he encounters another great man who came to India, Francis Xavier. Francis Xavier was a professor in Paris University. And so, after every class for about 10 days, St. Ignatius, who was rather older than Francis Xavier and older than other students in the classroom, used to run to the door of the classroom and stand there and repeat these words taken from the Bible. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? And so he kept repeating this. After five, six days, Francis Xavier, who was the professor, called him and said, has anything gone wrong with you? Are you mad? 
Why do you keep repeating these words? But Ignatius kept on repeating. And so after 10 days, Franz Xavier said, I think I must discuss this thing with you. And so let's go to the university garden. They had a long chat for two hours. And at the end of the chat, Franz Xavier became a disciple of his student. And that's how they two joined together in the University of Paris. And got three or four more from the university campus and formed a small group, the first group of the Jesuits. And finally they went after their studies to the Pope for permission that they could start this order called Society of Jesus. It's in fact a good initiative of Mr. Conoria and his family to bring all of us together for these three days people from different religions, leaders from different religions, put our, put our minds and hearts together and see where we are and where we should go. I think the world needs us. The world needs all of us on this journey for peace, harmony and fellowship. And we have to. If we make a collective attempt, we shall definitely win. God is on our side, and I think we are also on God's side. The earth is one, but the world is divided. Spiritual leaders like us, I think, will have to come together, take a bold stand, raise our voices against corruption, injustice, communal violence, and promote justice, harmony, and peace. In a climate of acute crisis, we must show the way to the future. We must promote a sound and acceptable spirituality, common to all religions. Spirituality that inspires even our political leaders. Spirituality that inspires our businessmen, our business persons. Spirituality that inspires even our children in the schools and colleges. It must empower us with a power that will transform this world. I want to thank the organizers and the team. And I also want to thank all the speakers here who have definitely given us an enlightenment. It is an opportunity, a golden opportunity to all of us. And I think we must march ahead as Jesus promises to be with us as a Christian. Wherever you are. Uh, wherever there are two or three gathered in my name, in the name of God, I am there with you. And so with that faith, I think we have begun the journey and we shall continue this journey. Thank you so much.